This is gonna be such an interesting video because there are three things you do not talk about at a dinner table. Politics, religion, and PC versus Mac. But in this video, we're gonna talk about it in context of what laptop did I get instead of the 15 inch MacBook Air that just came out. And also we're gonna talk about why this is such an interesting time to purchase a laptop because I know there are so many laptops out there. It's almost overwhelming both PC and Mac side, but I think I can help you narrow it down a little bit. Now to properly talk about this, I'm gonna give you some context on my background Around now, I am a PC guy, thorough and thorough. Made pretty much all my life starting with Windows 95, but really I was in IT doing infrastructure work for about nine years, deploying over 700 laptops, all PCs. So I'm pretty comfortable with PCs. Now I mainly do video work now, mostly on Premiere Pro and After Effects. So when M1 came out with the hype, I had to try the Mac. So to dip my toe a little bit, this is the laptop I got. So this is the base model M1 MacBook Air. And at the time, this was on sale for like $850. So when it's a good deal like that, you just buy. At least that's what my ancestors always say. So this being the base model, I didn't really expect much, but I was blown away. First of all, I had never experienced battery life such as this, but this sub thousand dollar laptop was playing my 4K 422 10-bit video just fine and everything just worked and I kind of fell in love with it so I basically exclusively used this laptop for almost a year now so naturally I should get the 15 inch MacBook Air right mm, not quite so learning from the pros and cons of this laptop I knew exactly what I was looking for my next laptop and these were the requirements so I love the screen resolution on this so I knew that I needed 2k resolution on the screen at least I do a lot of screen recording for my YouTube videos and 1080p it's not quite there in terms of pixels when you zoom in especially and this one being base model at 256 gigs of hard drive space yeah that was not enough for video editing work so I was using a lot of external drives and it just caused a lot of trouble so I needed at least 512 gigs of hard drive space and although this laptop is zoom zoom fast when it comes to After Effects work when I did RAM preview like the name says yeah 8 gigs of memory was not cutting it so I needed at least 16 gigs of RAM and with this laptop I really enjoy working from outdoors especially from the back of my truck I have pretty much decked out the back of my truck because of this. So I knew that I needed at least 400 nits of screen brightness to be able to work outside. And in terms of screen size, this 13.3 inch screen wasn't quite cutting it. When I was editing video, I was constantly squinting. And I went to a store to check out the 14.2 uh, inch MacBook Pro, and that was still kind of small. So I knew I wanted at least 15 inch screen size. And most importantly, my budget was around $1,400. And there's the obvious thing, it needs to be able to edit 4K, 422, 10-bit Sony footage. So let me know in the comments, do these requirements sound like something you're looking for? What are you looking for in a laptop? So to answer my requirements, enter the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i. So this laptop right here has a little bit above 2K screen resolution. It has one terabyte internal SSD, but it has one more M.2 slot, PCIe 4.0 by the way, not 3.0. So it's twice as fast as 3.0. So I can put another drive in here. It has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory and they're not soldered. And this screen right here is 500 nits in brightness and it's 100% sRGB and it's 16 inch and it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so it's much taller, and I love this. And the kicker right here is that this is on sale at B&H right now for $13.99. Originally, it's $17.99, and I was so mad last time I missed that sale, so it is finally on sale again. And as a bonus requirement, I have this keyboard cover. So one of the things, I know this is a small little thing, but for me, it was kind of big. So I like to eat Cheetos when I edit, you know? Um, did you guys know there was actually cover on this? It's, you can barely see it. Check that out, right? So obviously when I'm rendering, this is a much hotter laptop. I do have to take this off, but when I'm eating Cheetos and just browsing and doing my little task, yeah, this keyboard cover was very important and I wasn't quite sure this keyboard cover was gonna fit because everything out there on Amazon, it said it was for like last generation. So it said nothing about this generation, but this thing fits. In fact, I ordered two different kinds to make sure which one I like the best. So I'll leave a link to the one I like in the description below. But another bonus point for this laptop is that this has a USB-C port right here for PD quick charging. It can accept power up to 140 watts, so I'll have to do some tests with that. So as you guys can see, this is very generous in terms of ports. We got more ports on this side, this side. I'm just gonna list all the ports that's on this laptop here, but I can tell you the only thing that's missing on here is the SD card reader. So you might be wondering what kind of processor and GPU does this have? So this laptop has the 13th gen Intel i7 
13700HX. Now the X is different than the H version. So this has two more cores and more L3 cache than the H version. So it does require a little bit more thermal. So hence the thickness of this laptop. But considering how much power this thing has, this is still pretty impressive in terms of footprint because the GPU that's in here is the RTX 4060 with eight gigabytes of video memory, which is gonna be awesome for some gaming. Um, so I did buy a bunch of games from Steam like a long time ago. It's always on sale. It's a good deal you buy, you know? So I'm really excited to play those. But the real reason is that there is a 3D application plugin that might be coming very soon. So I'm getting ready for that. So on the benchmark side, this processor does beat out the base model M2. But I think Apple has some tricks up its sleeve, which I really felt when I was using the M1. So Apple definitely has better media engine. So I'm going to do a quick comparison right now. We'll do like a full geeky benchmark benchmark kind of thing when I do the full review for this laptop but let me show you this something really interesting so for this test I do have to plug in so this is probably a good time to show you guys this because <laughs> this is the power supply for the laptop that's over here yeah it's 300 watts and it is massive and it's heavy I would have to say the weight of this laptop is about the same weight as this power supply <laughs> But I'm gonna show you why this is all worth it for this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and roll screen recording on both of them. So as you guys can see, both sequence settings are exactly identical, including the video preview settings. So technically the footage we're working with is a Sony XAVC-S format. That's 4K, 422, 10-bit. So it's a hefty file. And we're gonna just straight up preview it on the timeline exactly now. And we'll be able to see how many frames it drops at the end of this. I'm running full resolution. There you go, it just ended. So on the PC, we dropped two frames. And on the Mac M1, we dropped 91 frames. Now when I switch this over to half resolution and then play that back again, both laptops should be able to pretty much slice through this and not drop any frames. There you go, and on the Mac, we drop zero, and PC, same thing. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, the fans are kicking on here. So I did the D-Squeeze 6K image on this on purpose, because I knew that was kind of the limit of the M1 when I did the project on this last time. I pretty much struggle with that. So it's fine when you don't have the adjustment layer of like color grading and LUTs on top of it. So this is a pretty hard task, but I was very impressed with this laptop. It was able to slice through that. A couple drop frame is expected, but this is very workable. And obviously when I preview it in real life, I'm not gonna put it at full resolution like this. There's so many real life tests I wanna do with this. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out. But I wanna do some tests when it's on battery power. So there's definitely some advantage to the M1 when it's on battery power. This right here, you guys saw how big the power brick is. So if I unplug that and it doesn't have that much juice coming into this laptop, how much does this actually slow down? That's the test I wanna do. So you might be saying, say, that's not fair. That's not an Apple to Apple comparison. You're right, it's Apple to PC. But in terms of the price, check this out. M1 currently, it's on sale by the way. So if you spec this out similar to this with one terabyte with 16 gigs of memory, the price is exactly identical. So yes, this is in the same class when it comes to price right now. But the biggest advantage of this laptop really is the storage and the expandable storage that is. So right now I have two terabytes in here because I was able to open the back of this laptop pretty easily with the pride tool and insert another one terabyte SSD. And these are dirt cheap now. So one terabyte right now, if you go to BNH, it's on sale, a pretty decent one for like, or a little over 50 bucks. So considering all that spec we just talked about, here's the real reason why I did not get the 15 inch MacBook Air. So when you go to the Apple store right now and purchase a base model MacBook Air that's 15 inch, starting price is really good. $12.99 sounds wonderful. So right now, in terms of video editing, eight gigs of memory and 256 gigs of hard drive, it's just not enough. So you have to upgrade. So to compete with this laptop spec, we're gonna go ahead and choose 24 gigs of memory because there's no 32 gig memory, right? And choose one terabyte hard drive and the price comes to $2,099. And really that's like the only beef I have with Apple. They have this great introductory price and as soon as you upgrade memory and hard drive, which is solder so you can't upgrade in the future. Right now that one terabyte hard drive I just put in, I can transfer that. So when I get my next laptop, I can transfer that out, right? You cannot do that with Apple. And I also feel like the 15 inch M2, they're kind of late on the M2 game, right? So there's M3 coming out in the future. So next year when M3 comes out, how much price reduction is M2 gonna have? 
have because apparently M3 is going to have somewhat of a leaps and bounds in terms of performance. And for me right now, it's all about playing that price drop game. So this is the interesting part. So because thanks to the 15 inch MacBook Air, every other laptop around the similar class, the price has dropped, including this one. And even with Apple's own, like when you look at that 16 inch M1 Pro, fantastic laptop. I almost got that one if it wasn't for this one, by the way. And look at the price reduction on that. And there's nothing wrong with getting the latest and the greatest if you can afford it and you have that kind of income, good for you. But for me, this right here was a good deal. So I'm hoping that this is still on sale. b and is kind of funny. So it's on sale one day and it's not the next day. So I really hope this is on sale when you guys check it out. In fact, I'm gonna list all the laptop I consider on the description below. But when you guys look for a laptop, go ahead and list the things that are must for you, kind of like what I did here, and match it with the laptop that's in the description and see if that's a good fit. And this video really wasn't about Apple versus PC. It was really about finding the right tool for you. And for me, I'm gonna be using both. When I need a long back, battery life, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Traveling, yes. A lot of pollen, yes. And down the future, when that 15 inch MacBook Air goes on sale down the road, which I'm pretty sure it will, I'll definitely go ahead and grab that. So I hope this video is helpful to you guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And since this is a videography channel, let's go ahead and end on some B-rolls.